the Republic XF84H Thunder Screech. This thing's weirder than a one-legged man in a butt-kicking competition because it's essentially an aircraft built with a supersonic propeller on the front. We're gonna talk about the design of this bad boy, why did it even exist, and stay to the very end of the video to see how the program turned out with the supersonic propeller driving this aircraft. It's, it's wild. So the XF84H Thunder Screech, what was it? Well, it was an experimental aircraft built by Skunk Works to try to create a supersonic aircraft that was driven by a propeller. It was supposed to be an advanced fighter jet that could compete with any fighter jet out there. And it was supposed to be able to carry air to air munitions and air to ground munitions and essentially sneak up on the enemy. But there was one catch. You could hear the propeller from 25 miles away because it was going supersonic. Whoopsie. The XF-84 was created by modifying an F-84F Thunderstreak airframe. And the way that they modified it was just wild. They installed a 12 foot long, 5,840 horsepower supersonic propeller to the front of this thing. I mean, why not? Let's just, let's try this out. Hey, uh, hold my beer, watch this. The XT40A1 turboprop engine was a centrally located engine that was put in a housing behind the cockpit with a long extension shaft to the nose mounted propeller. I mean, it was just insane the modifications that they had to do to this aircraft to put this 12 foot long supersonic propeller on the front. It was almost like they were saying, hey, we've got all this extra cash. Let's just give this a try and uh, we'll keep this between us. And just like other turboprop aircraft, the thrust could be adapted by adjusting the pitch of this propeller. So not only do you have this complicated 12 foot supersonic propeller on the front of the airframe, you also have the ability to adjust the pitch or the angle of attack of the blades of that propeller in order to get different types of thrust. And the tips of the blades, are you ready for this? The tips of the blades of the Thunder Screech were traveling at over 1.18 Mach. That's insane. That's somewhere close to and around, depending on altitude, 700 miles per hour at the tips of these blades. That's why this propeller could be heard from 25 miles away. And speaking of the multiple sonic booms that would come off this aircraft, when it was being tested at Edwards Air Force Base, it literally shook the control tower and created structural issues inside the control tower. I mean, could you imagine being an air traffic controller up there? You're sitting up there like strapped in because you think the control tower might fall over? <laughs> That's when you start to ask yourself, hey, why are we testing this aircraft near any type of population or near anything that's not built to have multiple sonic booms pumping through it for the 30 minute warm up period plus the takeoff sequence of the Thunder Screech. Yeah, that's right, you heard that correct. So the capability of the Thunder Screech was thought to have been pretty good during initial testing. However, the 30 minute warm up period while they were sitting there hearing multiple sonic booms just started to make people think, uh, hey, why are we doing this again? And then on top of the control tower, almost being shaken to the ground, multiple ground crew members were essentially knocked over and blown off of the tarmac due to the sonic booms coming from the thunder screech. So if the control tower is being shaken so hard that people inside it are literally strapping into their seats and they're having engineers come out to see the structural damage that was done to the control tower, think about what the blades were actually doing to the airframe itself. Now, would you as a pilot want to jump inside this thunder screech and just hope that it doesn't rattle the airframe to pieces? Yeah, I'd try it out too. And in the event of engine failure, what they had to do to the thunder screech was install a ram air turbine because the dependability of this supersonic propeller, as you've heard so far, wasn't exactly the greatest. So this ram air turbine would flow out into the airstream and allow the electrics and hydraulics to still be powered while this aircraft's engine was kind of iffy. And it's pretty cool because the ram air turbine is actually technology that was built upon and improved upon and that's something that still exists today in modern commercial airliners and there's versions of it in fighter jets 
However, the fighter jet versions use something called hydrazine. That's a chemical that basically blasts into the engine, into the hydraulics, into the different parts of the aircraft and just allows the hydraulics and electrics to be powered even while the engine of say the F-16 isn't producing any thrust. But that advancement of the Ram Air Turbine might make the Thunder Screech actually worthwhile and the development, the massive amount of resources, the multiple sonic booms, hey, sorry about that, might make all that actually worth it because the Ram Air Turbine has undoubtedly saved lots of people's lives. And it was rumored that this aircraft was gonna be able to get up to over 800 miles an hour because of that massive supersonic engine in the front that was spinning that propeller. But at the end of the day, it just wasn't able to do it. So no Air Force pilots actually jumped inside it, probably because they were in the control tower and they saw the thing shaking the entire tarmac, blowing people over, damaging the structure of the tower. And they're like, no, let's let some of the engineers who are also pilots, let's let them test it. So that's exactly what happened. Some of the original test pilots were part of the program that built the Thunder Screech. So they were the ones who ended up strapping themselves inside this thing. Lynn Hendricks, he was one of the Republic test pilots that was given the task of flying the Thunder Screech. He flew it once and then never flew it again, claiming that he couldn't get the thing to go over about 480 miles per hour. And he said that it developed the unhappy habit of snaking, which is basically losing longitudinal stability. So as he would fly it, the craft would kind of try to pull from one side to the other and do what you would see a sidewinder snake do. And as an aviator, that is not something that you want to have. In modern fighter aircraft, there's something called an ARI, an aileron rudder interconnect that keeps the centrifugal force of the jet engines from making the aircraft snake. But at the time, the technology for the Thunder Screech just wasn't there. And you have this massive propeller out front that's creating a centrifugal force that's going to make you snake, mostly probably to the left. And then you're gonna have to correct it by putting in right rudder. And that's just something that's super distracting as an aviator. So Lynn's out there, he's like, wait, I'm uh, risking my life with the supersonic propeller. The thing's snaking. Uh, I've caused multiple sonic booms and blew my friends over. Why am I doing this again? I really gotta look at my life choices. And Hendrix was quoted as saying, you aren't big enough and there aren't enough of you to get me in that thing again because of the instability of the airframe. And not to mention the other test flights, not just with Lynn, were riddled with engine problems, hydraulic failures, electrical issues, having to use the Ram Air Turbine to literally save your life on multiple flights. This just showed that, hey, maybe we could do a little bit better than the Thunder Screech. Another test pilot, Hank Beard, took the Thunder Screech up 11 times and 10 out of the 11 times he was forced to make emergency landings. Hey, at least he had one normal flight. The XF-84's propeller even traveled at supersonic speeds when it was in idle power. So again, the 30 minute warm up time just wasn't feasible to sit there producing supersonic sound waves, having to wait half an hour. I mean, if you're sitting alert and you get scrambled, you gotta be airborne within 12 minutes, sometimes even faster than that. A lot of the alert that I did, it was eight minute response time. So imagine having to sit there for 30 minutes while you're knocking over control towers, knocking over crew chiefs, you're not gonna make any friends. So the Guinness Book of World Records actually recorded the Thunder Screech as the fastest propeller driven aircraft ever built. They said it had a top speed of 670 miles per hour, 0.9 Mach and 623 during tests. But this claim has been disputed, especially by the test pilots that actually flew it. The unofficial speed record that's at the Air Force Museum is actually 520 miles per hour. So I'm thinking the Guinness Book of World Records just wanted this thing to sound a little cooler than it actually was. The prototypes never flew in the hands of US Air Force test pilots just due to the risks that were involved. So they only got those few handful of flights from the engineer test pilots who basically showed us that, yeah, we can do a little better than that. But when it comes to innovation and building cool things, the Thunder Screech actually stood out and other technology was developed from it like that Ram Air Turbine that has been applied and used in multiple fighter aircraft and commercial aircraft throughout history. So it just goes to show that, yeah, maybe you're gonna have a few failures. Maybe Skunk Works and DARPA are gonna have a few things they create that, yeah, 
it's not perfect. But at the end of the day, taking risks and putting yourself out there means you're gonna have some failures. You can apply that to your life, whatever you're up to, just like it applies to fighter aviation, to aeronautics, and creating things that push human civilization to the next level. Thanks so much for watching this video. The best compliment you can give me is just watch another one of these videos. They're gonna pop up right here. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you on one of these videos that of course you're gonna to decide to click on. <laughs> Have a great day.